Hello, you know, welcome back to another week. Today, we are looking a bit more at box plots um, as part of our statistics unit. And uh, today, we're going to be looking at comparing data sets uh, using box plots. So, how can we use a box plot uh, to get a quick kind of look at the difference between two sets of data? Okay, so let's look at this first example here. We've got two data sets shown in parallel box plots. It just means that the box plots are next to each other on the same axes or with the same scale, okay? Firstly, we've got to compare the similarities to a box plot. So remember, a box plot contains five key pieces of information. Uh, it has the lowest data point. Uh, it has the three quartiles, so Q1, the lower quartile, Q2, the median, Q3, the upper quartile, and then the highest point. And that's what we call our five-figure summary. And a box plot is a visual way of representing that. So we're going to compare box plots and say, are there any similar uh, points of those five figures that are the same? And, you know, later on when we're talking about the differences, uh, we'll be able to say which one's different. So for part A, when we look at set A and set B, we notice that the middle line there is actually in the same spot. So that's Q2 or the median, which is the same. And the other thing that we notice that's the same is that the highest uh, point here is, or the greatest score is also the same. So we can say the median and greatest score are the same. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, what we can do for these. Uh, so we can say the median, uh, which is 40, if we wanted to specify exactly, and the greatest score is 70. Okay, so just adding a bit of extra information uh, to specify exactly what those medians and greatest score are. Okay, compare the range of set A uh, with that of set B. So to compare, the best way to compare is to find the range for each of them and then uh, note any differences. So to find the range, we just do the highest minus the lowest. So for set A, it's gonna be 70 uh, minus 20, which equals 50. And then for set B, uh, it's gonna be 70 as well, but we're gonna minus 10, which equals 60. So then we can say that set B has a larger range of scores. Larger range of scores. Okay, and then set, uh, question C. Which, for which set of data is the middle 50% clustered more closely to the median? So what does that mean, the middle 50%? Well, the middle 50% is indicated by the interquartile range. That is the difference between Q3 and Q1, or the upper quartile and the lower quartile. That kind of tells us how... Uh, far apart uh, is the 50, middle 50% 50 of scores uh, from each other. So for set A, uh, the interquartile range equals, so Q3 uh, in set A is, uh, it's between two scores here. It's gonna be uh, 50, it's gonna be 55, I believe, is the upper quartile minus, and then it's going to be, so it's 30, 28, 26, 25. So we have an interquartile range of 30 for set A. For set B, uh, the interquartile range uh, is going to be 50 minus 30. So you can see here it's 20. So therefore set B is more clustered uh, towards the median. The median. Median. Okay, because that interquartile range, that is the space between the uh, upper and lower quartiles is smaller, so it's closer to the median in that instance. Okay, and then for uh, question D here, in which data set is the top 50% of scores? more closely clustered to the median. Okay, so the top 50% is gonna be the difference between uh, 
the median and the high score. Uh, but we can see here, uh, set B, the sort of 25% above the median is much closer uh, towards uh, the median and that the high score is the same. So that means there is going to still be a, more of a clustering in set B towards the median. So, uh, so set B as Q3 is closer to the median. Okay, you're going to have more scores closer to the median because that Q3 is closer and the uh, higher score is the same. Uh, if you had the higher score different, it would be a little bit more difficult to, to work out just from the box plot alone. Okay, uh, I'll write also and uh, greater score is the same. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to work out how can we um create a box plot from a histogram so that's what we're looking at in this example here now the the way that we're going to do this is we're going to create for ourselves a cumulative frequency table and that's going to help us then go from histogram to table to box plot so we've got to make this our table here so our table we're going to have number of days which is uh, essentially the frequency as one number of days. Uh, we're gonna have number of students absent. And then we're also gonna have uh, the cumulative frequency to help us in the process of making our box plots. So let's draw a table here. Now use a ruler. Um, is always better uh, when you're doing this. Uh, I'm going to actually just fix my line because that's a bad line. It's a bit better. Okay, so number of days. Now at zero, uh, we had 12 students absent. Uh, so we had 12, sorry. Uh, we had 12 students who were absent for zero days. That's what, that's what it means. And our cumulative frequency is just gonna add up uh, the number of students absent each time. So it just starts at 12, and then it's gonna go at, so we had nine students absent for one day. So our cumulative frequency is gonna be 21. Uh, we had four students absent for two days, so 25. We had two absent for three days, 27, another two for four days, uh, 29, and then we had one student absent for five days, so 30 is our cumulative frequency. So what the cumulative frequency kind of does, it's straight away we know that, oh, there were 30 students in this class uh, because when we add them all up, we get to 30. Um, and that's going to help us to calculate the things we need for our um, box plot, so our five figure summary, which is the lowest, the Q1, the Q2, the Q3, and the highest. So let's find our five figure summary, and then we're gonna draw our box plot. So uh, lowest is gonna be zero. Uh, that's quite easy to calculate. Uh, the highest is also easy to calculate, it's five. Uh, and then we're going to find out the median. So the median, if we've got an even number, so 30, uh, then it's going to be the 15th and the 16th score, the two middle ones there uh, that are going to help us uh, find the median. So the 15th and the 16th score are both in the one range. So Q2, uh, I, should, I should subscript that, but Q2, uh, is going to be one. Okay, uh, and Q1 then is going to be the middle uh, uh, from the lowest 15 scores. So the middle score there is going to be the eighth score. Um, and the eighth score is in the zero because it's less than 12. So Q1 is going to be zero. And then Q3, 
uh, is going to be the upper 15. Uh, so if we think about that, going from 16 to 30, the middle number uh, is going to be uh, the 23rd score there. Okay, and the 23rd score lies less than 25, so it's going to be 2. Okay, so the way that we use the cumulative frequency table is uh, if we're trying to find what number score it is, uh, we've got to think, well, is it going to be in this? Is it less than that or less than that or less than that? Uh, and, and that's how we work it out. So we've got a very kind of strange looking table here. Uh, but let's work it out on our um, box plot. So we'll put zero here uh, and we'll go up every four. I think that'll do one. Oh, sorry, every three we're doing. Two, three, four. Okay, that will do for now. So let's put in our, go from left to right. So we'll go lowest first, which is zero, uh, which is gonna be here. Now we have an interesting thing here though, where Q1 is also zero. So in this case, there's gonna be no little whisker in front of the box plot. We're going to just start the box right there. Okay, and then Q2 is one. So we find one, and we draw our line there. That's gonna be in the middle of our box. And then Q3 is two, and that's gonna be the end of our box. So our middle 50% is all there. And then the last thing we need to do is add our highest score, which is at five, and then draw our big long whisker out to that. So there's our box plot. It's an interesting one. We don't have a left uh, whisker because Q1 and the lowest were the same because we had such a heavily skewing, uh, uh, positive skewing that is, because there were more lower scores. And so, uh, yeah, uh, that's how we got such an interesting looking box plot. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the video. Just remember to go from uh, histogram to box plot, we've got to do that cumulative frequency table. Uh, in the middle to help us. All right, good luck with the questions today and I'll see you in the next video.